The following podcast sometimes offers unusual solutions to usual problems. These solutions are meant for qualified agencies or individuals to put into action. And I'd be willing to bet that's not you. Listen, folks, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Neither should you. So let's go have a laugh. Welcome to Unscrew It Up. We offer differently twisted solutions to life's little problems. I'm Josh. I'm Amanda. Amanda, today we're going to talk about... Shoes. Shoes. Are you a big shoe person? No, I do not spend lots of money on shoes. I have a very small foot, so finding... Just one? You just have one just small one foot? Just one small foot so and you... one giant foot. I wore a size five growing up, and then I had the 16-year-old, and I could wear a five and a half. Now I have the six-year-old, and I can have I can wear a six which then puts me into like women's shoes. But for a long time, I had to buy kid shoes. So shoes have always been problematic. And I also don't see the point in spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on them. Help me understand something. And this is not just shoes now. This is also clothing in general. Why can't we just have one sizing system for everyone? Why do we have to have like a kid's 13 and an adult 13? Why do we have to have Women's clothes, it's a size zero, but for me, it's like an XL or whatever. Why can't we just have one system for everyone? Well, and one system across the world, because I found myself in the UK having to do mental math to figure out what size I was when I was there. And I definitely bought a shirt that was too big for me because I did the math wrong. Because they use metric. They use, well, I, I mean, it's just a different system. So a 12 here is a 14 or a 16 there or whatever. I, it's not metric. It's just sizes are sized larger so here a zero is small like tiny for us and there that's like a six or whatever i don't know See, it's I don't, very you're, confusing you're gibberish is what right. you're, you're giving me right now um because i don't understand any of it i just know what i need to wear i just go in extra large bada bing bada boom i'm done shoe sizes though are super weird here because kid sizes you start out with you know infant and then you've got a toddler three and a four and a five and it goes all the way up to a 13 and then it goes back to a one right i what, don't understand why that. yes this is my point i yes, don't i know I don't what's your that. point i'm just also expressing to you that i don't understand it are you going to solve that problem today I am not. Are you? Uh, no. Well, that is my solution is just to have one Stop system. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Why don't they just base everything on the actual measurement? Okay, my foot is however many inches long. That's what I get. And Boom. then that would be standard across the industry because you can find that a size six in this brand does not fit the same as a size six in this other brand. Oh, our world really is screwed up. And that would solve the problem for like when you have shoes that are for every gender and gender expression so you've got converse right and it doesn't the shoe's not different but it will size it in a women's size and a men's size so you've got one shoe that's like a women's seven but a men's nine or whatever same shoe different sizes also you know converse don't do half sizes yeah some shoes don't well that's even being less like helpful to right. the consumer we'll get to shoes in a second we aren't solving this problem but if you have a solution other than just stop it let us know get in touch unscrew it up at gmail.com but first let's hear from wilson technologies so wilson technologies dear listener if you are not aware they are a subsidiary of familiar wilson's media well that's us it's a group of, of fictional people that we employ to come up with solutions to problems that we don't come up with here on this show. Wilson Technologies, by the way, their catchphrase, which we've been workshopping, is... Wilson Technologies, give us your heart and we'll fix it. <laughs> the truth is saying we'll give you a pen. <laughs> and we'll give you a what? A pen. That's a good Say one. Say anything. I gave her my heart, she gave me a pen. Oh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Here's the problem. Kids won't do chores. They will if you make it worth their while. Okay, well, there's the key then, I guess. Make it worth their while. That can get really expensive or really cumbersome to keep track of, one of the two. Or you can like threaten them, which I never like to do. No. Right? I never like to have that it's be It's not the successful. Thing. It's successful in the moment, but it's not 
like sustainable. No, the kids won't do chores, but damn it if they won't play video games of them doing chores. Or watch p- other people doing the video games of the chores on YouTube. But we need to gamify this in such a way that they will get that instant gratification of points once they do the chore. Now We tried that with the home dojo. Like he's got class dojo. We tried that. We gave points and it stopped working. It has to be more immediate. They need okay. to see the points pop up once they fold the jacket or whatever. So, so they can gain coins or whatever. Yes. yes. And see, here's boop, the thing. Boop. Here's the thing. Here's the weird thing. When they play a video game, like they are not getting any sort of tangible rewards. It costs nothing. In fact, sometimes <laughs> when they play these video games, you have to pay extra in order for them to have the privilege of playing yes. more levels. We got we to gotta hack this. And it's so easy now that more VR headsets are coming. VR chores. Okay. Or a, I should say AR chores. Augmented reality? Augmented reality chores. So you program in, okay, the child needs to fold the clothes. They need to do the dishes. They need to clean the bathroom. And then as soon as they perform one of those tasks, ding, little coin. They see it right on the screen. <laughs> Doesn't get them anything unless it's something virtual in their augmented reality. This but is it works. so easy. In fact, I'm sure that this can happen like, like tomorrow. Apple or whoever can wake up. And have have come up with a game, AR, do your chores. Do your chores. I love it. Already these systems, these cameras can scan things and tell what they are. That's a thing that already yeah, happens. Yeah. We're going to beat Apple to the market, actually, with the AR chores game. And we'll come up with some good music. Doom, doom. Doom, 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 doom. They yeah. can even like, we can put in exercise, too. Yeah. Okay, so... You need to carry these clothes. You need to jump on these blocks. Yep. Just like Mario. And they're going to see the blocks. They won't really be there. But yeah. Oh, my God. This is such a great idea. No, I think it's a great idea. Now, whilst Wilson Technologies is thinking about this, I need whatever version that is for pets. Because this joker has never paid rent a day in his life. He's never paid for his food and or his treats. He lays around like we are here to serve him. And I need to figure out a way to capitalize on getting him to do some chores, too. So we're going to have now our dog addicted to video games? No, you- I didn't say it had to be video games. I'm saying I need them to come up with a solution for making the dog work for his keep. I, that's a weird line that you'd be crossing because now all of a sudden I'm imagining him pulling a tiny cart, <laughs> like oxen, <laughs> like with the socks in it or whatever. Listen, uh, if there's enough peanut butter involved, we could get him to do it. I'm not super comfortable. Listen, folks at PETA, <laughs> just keep ignoring us, please. Do not listen to this crazy lady who wants to put dogs to work. I just want him to be grateful then. If he's not going to be, just be grateful for the fact that he pays nothing. And he every now and again interrupts our podcast. That's right. Him. All right, enough of that nonsense. Let's solve the problems of the world. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wilsons will now unscrew it up. Shoes. Ah, shoes. Those things that we cannot do without. They're very important. I think that they're often overlooked as a source of utility and comfort. Yeah, comfort is not a thing for women's shoes. And I did a little research uh, during our break time there. Did you know that in the early 1300s, Britain established the first means to measure shoe size. So we have Britain to blame? They declared barley corn as the basis for shoe measurement. I love this. In education, we call this non-standard measurement. Go ahead. Yes. Well, they standardized it, though. They ruled that the length of three barley corns were equivalent to one inch, your barley corn maybe, making this the standard for sizing. <laughs> you giggled at yourself. So there you go. It's, that, that's All where right. it came from. To let you know what we do on the show, if this is your first listen, we will come up with a list. We will each give our ideas, then whittle it down to five, and then send it to an organization or person to take these ideas and to make them so, right? This week, we are sending our ideas to Charles Entertainment Cheese. Oh, okay. Now, Chuck E. Cheese does not himself wear shoes. No. So he is an unbiased third party, and he's going to take our ideas, and he's going to make them happen just as well as the service inside of a Chuck E. Cheese happens. (laughs) Okay, so not well. So, Amanda Wilson, you are up first. What is your first problem and how you will solve it? 
I attack I attacked this uh, subject by thinking about my issues with shoes, right? Not global issues, but my my issues. And the first one is that there are, and mine included, shoes can get really funky smelling, especially for women when we wear flat shoes. And unless you get just the right sock where it doesn't show, like the no show socks, but it depends on how your shoe is cut. Sometimes it will. You you wind up wearing it without without socks and then you sweat in it and it's uncomfortable and you get blisters. And But we also know that you have an ongoing battle with trying to get your shoes to not smell bad. You have come up with a solution of putting them in the freezer. On our other podcast, Super Familiar with the Wilsons, we did a segment where we talked about different Bubba Misa. Bubba Misa being... Old wives' tales? Old wives' tales. And one of them was, which I don't know why this is an old wives' tale, by the way. I can't imagine them sitting around the farm saying, how can I get the smell out of thine shoes? (laughs) But you're supposed to be able to put your shoes that smell into the freezer for two days, and then when you take them out, they don't smell anymore. Now, that works up to a point. Now, if you want to hear more about that, do search out that that episode on super familiar with the wilsons but i'm assuming then your solution is to not put yes, shoes correct. in the freezer because the first time i found out that you had done this i lost my tiny mind because i don't like the idea that your stinky shoes are in the freezer with our food you had wrapped them in a bag but still it's i just couldn't get over that your shoes were in the freezer however i will concede that it worked now i don't know if it continues to temporarily. work temporarily temporarily it worked right I am putting forth, if we're going to use the idea of cold or freezing temperatures that do whatever they do to the bacteria for a certain amount of time, and and successfully, instead of putting them in my freezer with my food, I am suggesting, you know those uh, cold packs that you break open? Yes. And, And whatever the chemical thing happens, then it freezes or it gets super cold, right? Usually they're made for first aid. I am proposing that shoe insoles have these things. And so you can break it. It'll turn super cold. It sits in your shoe for a couple days. You throw it away and you buy more. So it's like the cold packs, but it's in the shape of the insole of your shoe. Would you ever have cause to, like maybe it's a hot day, you put that in there and then you wear the shoe? I think this is a fabulous idea. If you're not wearing the correct no-show socks, which are hard to say and hard to find, your feet really sweat, especially when you're in Florida and the heat index is 109. So this would keep your feet cold. It is the opposite of the pocket warmer things that you do in the cold weather where you break the thing and it gets super hot and you put it in your pocket. This is the, the hot weather version of that. And your shoes smell better. Well, how about then just temperature control ones? Yeah, but then you got to get some sort of mechanism, right? some mechanics or something that's going to control the temperature. Well, we would we would have someone sort that out. But like just imagine like a battery pack that you clip to the side of your shoe or it's in your pocket, probably build it into the shoe. And then you can, depending on how tightly you lace it, you can control the temperature. Yeah, but that works for sneakers, right? It doesn't work for every type of shoe. Okay, then then you like tap the side. I don't know. There's a button. Not my okay. problem. All right, all right, all right, all right. So do you want to have just cold packs for shoes or do you want to have temperature controlled well, shoes? Can, can the temperature controlled shoes get to freezing so it gets the smell out? I suppose that's up to Charles Entertainment Cheese. All right, well, if good old Chuck can figure out a way to get them to get rid of the scent and also uh, keep my feet cool, then fine. That's good. I like that. I was thinking along those lines as well for smell, but it was more of a mitigate it before it happens and okay. so have temp control in your shoe. But I didn't have that as one of my solutions. So that's good. My problem is that a lot of times when I'm walking behind someone, they'll like stop or they'll change direction all yes. of a sudden. Oh, I hate this. And it's, it's irksome. And like I take time to stop. I'm <laughs> like a, a large semi, not like a small Volkswagen. So I, right. I, I should probably, fo- my following distance should be <laughs> more Josh Lengths than it is. But I need to know what's about to happen in front of me. And this is easy to fix. They already have shoes that have little headlights. Yes. For, for especially slippers for when you're in the dark, which I think is a brilliant idea and was going to be one of my solutions until I looked it up and saw it already existed. But we need to have 
of just for sidewalk safety and for walking safety, the complete complement of accessory lights you need to have on the back of your shoe, brake, brake lights. lights. <laughs> you need to have blinkers. Okay, I'm going to go this way soon. So that I, behind you, yep. I know. Or, you know, people in front of you, if you're walking on a sidewalk, you can see, well, this person's about to go in this store. I'm going to slow down so that they can cross in yes, front of yes, me instead yes, of that yes. awkward thing that they do. So I need... Signal designators on shoes, not just headlights for the dark, but also brake lights and turn lights. I think this is a fabulous idea. However, I do think we'll all just be staring at the ground now. Oh, we do anyway. We will miss the rest of the world. What about, so I I am with you on this. One of my biggest pet peeves, especially when we're in a big city and or at a theme park, when people just stop in the flow of of walking traffic. Oh, the worst. To look at things or talk to each other, just be aware that there are people around you and move out of the way, right? Just do that. So what if we also get um, the backup sound? If people are going to start, you know, like they stop and then they start to reverse, you just beep, beep, beep from their shoes. That's fine. Sure. We can do that. I like that mostly because that'll entertain me. Now, what occasion would you have to blink your headlights at someone? If there's like a cop, like down the way, (laughs) like I just passed a cop. Don't jaywalk. You blink blink your headlights. I like that. Hey, your high beams are on. Turn them down. Or somebody, you know, sometimes you get to a stop sign and you're sitting there waiting. You're not sure who's who's right away it is and somebody will flash their lights to go ahead. Right, right. That too. You know, you you both kind of stop and you do this. Are you going to go? Am I going to go? We're both turning left into the store and then you just flash. Would it be though that that we're in front of like a, a senior who's just walking straight, but their left blinker is on? (laughs) Blinker's been on for like blocks. Yes. All right. Well, that's they're going to make an eventual left. Th- that's that's right. That's my solution. What do you have? I next? think it's a great idea. All right. We we touched on this a little bit. That you said that shoes were for protection and comfort, or whatever you said. But historically, women's shoes are not comfortable, right? And there is this societal expectation that women wear, you know, high heels or fancy shoes, and some and some women really love to wear the high heel. I don't wear the high heel well because I am one clumsy, not full of grace. Also, now that I have broken my foot thing, I can't wear a, a heel even though it, it's healed. That's two different uses of the word. But I am proposing a convertible shoe. And this probably exists. Don't come to me and say this exists. I realize that we could Google anything and someone out there somewhere has made it. However, One, it is not out to the masses because I've not seen it. And two, it's probably done in a gimmicky way or not a way that's sustainable and or people want. Three, when we do have comfort shoes for women, they tend to be ugly. They just, you know, you go look for a comfort heel, but it's not attractive. So I am proposing a dress shoe in which the heel folds up like those um, cups that are expandable or the shot glasses that are expandable. So it's just an expandable heel. You wear it around. And then when you're done with whatever that event is, you're walking to your car, you're walking back to the office, whatever, you you put it back into the sole of the shoe. It folds up, goes back in, and then you've got a flat on. Like Heelys. Heelys have the wheels, but you're saying they pop a, in and out, right? right, right but right. this would like fold. I, this would have to fold to get a longer heel. And then you, you know, depending on how high you want your heel to be, you can fold it two or three times, leave some of it in the sole. They they have this thing where it's marketed to women and it's a flat shoe that folds up that you keep in a little drawstring pouch. So when you go out for the night and you're wearing your fancy shoes, you can then switch it and have your you can take your fancy shoes off and wear your flats and you're comfortable. But then you're still carrying around these big shoes this way. All in one shoe dress to comfort fancy to my feet are not hurting walking to my car foldable shoes. If men like had to wear heels, this would have been invented decades uh-huh, ago. Absolutely. And they would probably have like springs in them so mm-hmm. that if you hit the button quickly, you can just fly away. You can just <laughs> like the Incredible Hulk jump away. It would have spring loaded action as yeah. well. That's what I want to suggest, though, is to do this, but also have a, an emergency escape button. You're at a bar and this really creepy person is hitting on yeah. you. Hit the button, pew, grasshopper away, safe. Yeah, no, I like this. So it's like the button that you push on an umbrella that makes it go. That's right. right? Yeah, now, yeah. Spring loaded. Don't, Doesn't even have to be mechanical. Don't accidentally hit it. Right. <laughs> 
you'll, you'll end up Take- on the chandelier or whatever. I don't know. All right, next. My next one is I hate having pockets. Do you? I do. It's it's clumpy and clumsy, and I do not like it. If I could get away with it, I would want to have it so I wouldn't have to carry anything around ever. Well, yeah, but that's not, that's, where are you going to do with your phone? Right. So what I'm suggesting is just like James Bond already has, storage in your shoe. Now, I'm sure this exists for like a key if you go out running or whatever. Right, but I need all my things to fit. Okay. So you got big shoes. Well, it's either a side pocket or it's in the heel or across the entire sole. But there should be plenty of room to have storage inside of your shoe so that you do not have stuff banging around in your pocket. Okay. I don't want to carry a bag either. I've tried, I've done the, the man bag thing, I've done the backpack thing. None of that works for me. So I need to have a secret compartment doesn't need to be secret because everyone will have access to having these but i need to have a compartment in my shoe to carry things around so i could see how this could work if you have a bigger foot depending on what kind of phone you have if you have an iphone what's the 14 pro or whatever the biggest one is you're going to need to have a bigger shoe if you have a smaller foot like me you're going to need to switch to the new samsung flip phone that apparently is back in in fashion But I have a backpack. The backpack I got for traveling has a zippered compartment on the bottom for shoes. Just the bottom flap unzips and it's flat and you just put your shoes in there. So it's the same thing. You would just unzip the heel of whatever the shoe is and put your phone in. And you know these companies. Let's say they come out with these shoes that have compartments and it goes off a storm and everyone loves them. The cell phone manufacturers are going to start designing towards that because they want to get in on the action. So they're just going to be in the shape of a shoe now. Yeah, yeah, like Maxwell Smart. You ever watched Get Smart where his entire shoe was a phone? I'm too young for that. Oh, my God. Storage shoes. I don't want to put my shoe up to my face, though. Especially after going in and out of public restrooms. Okay. Two words, Bluetooth. But then what's in your ear? Where are you going to store that? Uh, That's a different episode. Okay. My third problem with shoes is that they never manage to be housed in the location that they are supposed to be housed in. Now, we have four people that live in this house currently, but we have a laundry room right off the garage. I have a shoe rack. Everybody has some version of dress shoes for work and or school, tennis shoes for exercise and or school, flip-flops for the world, whatever. I have some sandals there. We have pool shoes for the the little boy. Everybody has versions of shoes. And no matter how many times I say, please put your shoes on the shoe rack, there is always a pile of shoes that are at the base of the shoe rack. And I will admit mine are there too because I've given up trying. Nobody else puts them on the shoe rack, so I've given up trying. Sometimes I find your ties on the shoe rack, so I'm not quite sure why the shoes don't go there, but your ties go there. The shoe rack is not being utilized. And then right now, if you go look for the six-year-old shoes, one is underneath the dining room table, one is by the sliding glass door. Okay. That he kicked off when he came in yesterday. You know where they are. What's the problem? The problem is I'm tripping over them. I want to run the vacuum. The vacuum runs into them. And so I am going to employ the strategy or the, the technology of the robot vacuum. The robot vacuum has an app, has a home charging base. You can open the app and say, return home, go back to your charger, whatever the words are, right? It's a homing beacon that uses Bluetooth and wireless to bring the vacuum back to its charging base. It also does it when it knows it's running out of batteries. It'll just put itself away. I need a shoe rack with shoes that are Bluetooth enabled or wireless enabled. We can add little tiles to them. It doesn't have to be the manufacturer doesn't have to do it. So that when you jokers do not put your shoes away, they will then go boop, 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 boop. You can't see my hands, but they're coming together like shoes back to their shoe rack and will put themselves up because you people aren't putting your shoes up. Somebody needs to fix this for me and my sanity. Okay, fine. Well, we'll, we'll, I'm going to go to the next topic right now because (laughs) you are warm. (laughs) That's my biggest problem with shoes. They're every place in this house. Just put them in the laundry room on their rack. It's not hard. Okay. Will do, and I'll go pick up the shoes after we're done recording. (laughs) My next thing is I love to pick things up with my feet. I'm aware. But you can't do that with shoes. Okay. 
So you need the Vibram five fingers. No, and those are so so that I've actually had a pair of of these five finger shoes, and they were difficult for me to to put on because they were too tight. And also, I have a um, little too much information here. I have hair on my toes, and so it always pulled the hair when I was. Uh, it was very uncomfortable. They're so ugly too. Well, they're just not comfortable. Sorry to I, the people that I, I own them like and love them. them. Because I didn't find that that they provided enough protection on the sole, right? I would still yeah. step on stuff and it would still hurt. So that seemed kind of useless to me for, you know, it wasn't fit for purpose. So I suggest on the front of, of my shoes, I want just little little grabber claws. Like the little, little... Like the little arm, toys that you yeah. would buy yeah. when you were a kid, the little yeah. robot grabber and yeah. you would squeeze the thing. It can be mechanical where like a little uh, line runs up, you know, the shoe and up my leg and I hit a button... Or it can just, whenever it automatically senses something in proximity, it'll grab it. It's going to be grabbing everything, though. That's not a good solution. <laughs> but I want little claws in front of my shoes so that I can pick things up off of the ground without bending. Because I don't like bending anyway. I'm to the age now where, where bending involves, like, I have steps to bending. There's, like, <laughs> getting ready to bend. There's halfway down. There is almost losing my balance. <laughs> there's point of no return. And then there's the return trip. Right. I mean, I need to Google map. <laughs> bending down for me, right? So I'd rather not do it. If I had claws on my shoes, easy problem solved. That's a simple one. Like, I don't even think, I think we should just send that one automatically through because that could happen. All right, I'm okay with that, but I do think it needs to not just be that it senses something because you're going to be picking up all the lizards that run by you. You're going to be picking up, like, you know, the roaches that run across. So maybe you've got a bug catching shoe. But I think you <laughs> need to control you Apparently in this world you that you've up. constructed that we live in, we've got lizards and roaches <laughs> just all over the place. Yes. All right. Do you have another one? Well, my last one is kind of the it's the two prong to the um, robot vacuum technique for shoes. The fourth final big problem that I have with shoes is getting children to put them on. Shoehorns. You remember shoehorns? I do remember shoehorns. It's not that they can't put them on. Well, they do act like they can't put them on. But it's, you know, put your shoes on. Okay, go get your shoes on. All right, go get your shoes. I mean, how many times do you say this in the morning before school? Put your shoes on, put your shoes on, put your shoes on. I am proposing the same technology, but then those shoes are uh, identified with one person. And so when we say, it's like when we talk to the AI device, you say, hey, Nike high tops, put yourself on the six-year-old. They hone into the six-year-old and come right to him so that he has no reason to not put his shoes on. This is terrifying. Why? Shoes that chase down <laughs> children. It's just they'll freaking put their shoes on. The episode won't they? of Goosebumps that nobody wanted. <laughs> they'll put their shoes on. They're weeping and sobbing. <laughs> Shoes will be on. Can you imagine the heartbreak <laughs> when your child looks at you and just says, Mommy, why is my shoe trying to eat my foot? Because it, ne yes, you need to be wearing your shoe. All right. Well, you can't tell me this isn't a problem getting him to put his shoes on. So, no, how no, would no, you no, fix I, it? no. I put it on sh shoes that chase children. <laughs> I put it on there. All right. My last one. Jeez. Now that I think about it, this may tie into what you just said, what you just proposed. Self-driving shoes. Shoes taking over the world, basically, is what you Self said. Self-driving shoes. Shoes that can tell me where to go. Here's one practical uh, application to this immediately. When you are visiting a strange place, what do you do? You'll pull up Google Maps. Yeah. You'll search the destination, and you can like search walking yep. or public transpo yep. or, or driving. But I don't like having to look at it. I don't have, like having to constantly look at my phone to see where I'm going. I'd rather be able to sightsee. Well, also what, it identifies you as, as a tourist and then you become a well, target. that's true. It's a safety issue, especially in the big cities. So what if your shoes prompted you where to go? Now, what I'm not suggesting is shoes on wheels because those are skates, and that is a different episode. But using a series of small springs and air nozzles. <laughs> nozzles, that's funny, and I don't know why. It will it will prompt you in the correct direction. Okay. Now you still have to respond to the prompts because I'm not thinking that's going to be powerful enough just to propel you. Yeah. Again, not being a skate, not having wheels, but it'll definitely let you know the right direction to go. Now this has many practical implications. There's that. There's dancing. I can't. Oh, I can't, can't dance. dance. But if my shoes had the rhythm and felt the, the rhyme, rhythm. <laughs> then they could help me. Yes. And prompt me in the right direction. All and right. then it doing it, like I still have to perform the muscle memory of, or the muscle action of 
of dancing, and then I will build up you the will muscle, build muscle memory. Yeah. Muscle memory, and then boom, my my shoes have taught me to dance. I think this is a beautiful idea. As somebody who just got back from a foreign land. We were in England for 10 days. There was a lot of walking and or taking public transport. And we did a lot of looking at our phones as we were going. And, you know, you'd, you'd get really confused and turned around. And so you'd have to stop and look and look. And this way, yeah, you're missing all the things. You're also declaring to everybody, I am clearly not from here. Please come take advantage of, of me and my, my ignorance. And so I think that the self-propelled shoes or the Google map of shoes or whatever you're calling it is a great idea. Now, I will say one drawback to having this on your phone is that sometimes you forget that you've chosen walking. So I was in West Palm last week for work and I had accidentally booked the wrong hotel from the rest of my team. So I was trying to figure out how far my hotel was and I pulled it up on my phone and it said one hour and I flipped out. <laughs> I was like, how did I book a hotel an hour away? And then I realized I was still on like public transport. And so it was trying to figure out how to get me a bus to be able to do this. And it was going to be, it was I, when I switched it to driving, it was six minutes. So, you know, that can be a little confusing too. But if you just have it for your shoes set to walking all the time, perfect. Done. Love it. Okay. We have eight things, and we need to whittle them down to five. I very much, maybe it's just because it's the last thing you said, but I, as somebody who just experienced it, I very much think we need the geolocation, whatever we call them. Self-driving shoes. shoes. Self-driving shoes. I want with the self-driving shoes, it'll be even more important to have turn signals and signal indicators because I sometimes won't even know where I'm going. So are they just going to indicate for themselves? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They're going to lead you in a direction and they're going to let other people know, hey, look, I've told this doofus to turn this way because he needs to get to where he's going. So turn signals, signal designators on shoes. Okay. I need the shoe rack and technology to put shoes away when humans won't do it. Like this is really important for my sanity and our marriage. So the robot vac shoe mode. Claws on shoes. Oh, Lord. This is only practical for you. No, it isn't. Everyone can use them. They're allowed to use them. Okay. That looks See, dumb hanging off the front of your shoes. Not if everyone's doing it. Listen, if we've <laughs> learned nothing else from society, one person wearing stupid looking little white ear pods in their ear looks dumb. Everyone do it. All of a sudden, that's the norm. Okay. You get to choose the last one. Temp controlled shoes. I think it's important from a stinky standpoint, but also just from your feet not sweating. Excellent. We've got a nice little set here. So you wake up. Thankfully, your shoes don't chase you <laughs> to jump on your feet. What, imagine a nightmare. Oh, my God. That would be a whole new brand of therapy that would have to. You put on your shoes. They're temperature controlled. So you set that at the beginning. Like, I want my feet to stay at 74 degrees all day or whatever it might be. Then you go out, you program in, listen, I need to, to get to work today, and then you go and you don't really pay that much attention to where you're going because <laughs> your self-driving shoes have it sorted. They've got little headlights, they've got little blinkers. You could not be in, in better position. You get home, you throw your shoes wherever <laughs> you want them because the robot vac is going to chase them down. No, it's not the robot vac. It's the robot vac technology. You open the app and say, park my shoes, and then they just go park. See, they're self-driving anyway. They just park themselves in their parking spot. Maybe this is what will get you to use the shoe rack if I call it a parking spot. <laughs> Maybe. All right. But you well, didn't employ your claws. Huh? You didn't employ the claws. I didn't need them today, but I uh, have okay. the claws should I need should them. Should you need them. Got it. Imagine if we had chosen the the option that had the shoes chasing your children and they have the <laughs> automatic claws on front. Nightmare. Well, Amanda, I think that shoes are... Unscrew. Unscrew. advice tell us what to do boss us around boss us around amanda we have listener correspondence if you would like for us to give you advice then email us at unscrewed up at gmail.com that's right it's gmail because hey you know we're not fancy like all that quite yet dear amanda and josh our child has a habit of <laughs> <laughs> yelling across the house. Same. How can we teach them to stop yelling and instead come to where we are? 
Signed, Going Deaf in Detroit. Dear Going Deaf, I would love to say I have a solution for you, but I don't. We have the same exact problem at this house. We have tried the not responding. It doesn't work. You would think that you could condition the child. However, last night, the child was yelling for a tissue for about 30 seconds while I was in the bathroom and he was in his bed. And Josh came running because he thought something was wrong with the child because of all the yelling and and, and learned, consequently, not to run up the stairs in socks. So just teaching them to not yell doesn't work. Not responding doesn't work. And in fact, I am the wrong person to talk about this because I give up and just start yelling back. So either I just... You were raised in a yelling house, weren't you? I was raised in a yelling house. and But my house was small, so you didn't have to really yell. Our house is two stories. It's not a giant house, but it's two stories. So sometimes I will go to the stairs and yell up the stairs, which because we employ the AI device. And when I tell that she who shall not be named, because she'll turn on right now, to drop in on the children, she'll drop in and then the children just ignore me. So I just wind up yelling into the AI device or they just tell her to hang up because they don't want to hear me. So I don't have advice. You live with a bunch of yellers. What is your advice? The dog even yells. Well, the th- here's the thing that we have for the dog. We do have a collar, you a bark collar for the dog. You cannot suggest a bark collar for this child if you wouldn't let me have shoes that will put themselves on the child's feet. <laughs> I'm not suggesting. First of all, sicko, I'm not <laughs> suggesting a bark collar. I just, I'm giving you context. We okay. do have a bark collar for the dog. It does not shock the dog. It beeps at the dog. It beeps at the dog, which is a good deterrent for the dog. If we remember to keep it charged. But we don't remember to keep it charged. So I, and obviously we can't do that. But I do think that, and you know, the the idea of intercom, as you mentioned, having the Alexa device. I do think that, not answering is the way to go. It does. It has, we have been in this house for three years, and it's he still does it. But it's because you eventually answer. <sighs> See, I always try to say, "Little friend, come into the room where we are, mm-hmm. and you can talk to us." And we just need to stick with that. Okay. No, you're not buying what I'm well, selling. Well, because I just, I just, I don't. I'm tired. <laughs> I don't I just don't have the patience. Maybe I just need to move out. N- what? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you. I'm well, love here's you. the thing. Negative I, I'm not a big fan of negative reinforcement, right? I, I don't I don't really believe in a lot of that. I think that if anything that will build up within in them this uh, extrinsic motivation, something that it, you know, they will receive a negative consequence. But I don't know that it's something that once they like leave the house or whatever, what lessons have they learned? They need to be internally motivated, but I don't know how. Um, so every time he gets up or she or whoever, you know, for for deaf in Detroit, you know, whoever they have, um, reward them every time they don't yell at you. Okay. How do you reward them? Well, like with a pat on the head. That's what every kid wants, a pat on the head. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not, not going to give them candy. No, we don't want to reinforce with food. Let me put that out there. Reinforcing with food can create some serious, complicated feelings toward food, and it's not healthy. I think yep. this would all be solved with the AI uh, headset that yep. we already have on them, so they'll do chores. When they yell across the house, you lose points. Sorry, it's not me. Coins go away. It's the computer. Or you lose health, like Minecraft Oh, God. Has. Minecraft has the hearts, and when you right. do things wrong, the hearts go away, so probably I, not that. I don't, I don't want to <laughs> reinforce that in any... now. If they yell at us, we lose health. Right. That's right, for right. certain. So here's the thing. Instead of making it punitive, make it positive. So instead of they lose coins, it's when they don't yell and they come downstairs, then like get like a whole treasure chest full of coins. And then right. It's like, but I, I honestly, I had said that, but I don't know how you quantify not doing something. That's true. <laughs> it's not Let's, my problem. You know whose problem that is? Well, it's not Chuck E. Cheese's problem. That's Wilson's technology's problem, not mine. All right. Well, if you have an idea, since we actually are zero help here, don't like doing these where we cannot help. Um, but uh, Deaf in Detroit, we're going to put the call out to our listeners. Listeners, email us at unscrewitup at gmail.com. If you have a solution a positive solution, not not negative reinforcement, on how to get our child and, and this other child not to yell across the house. Get in touch. Let us know.
Amanda. Joshua. I think we've unscrewed everything up that we can unscrew I up think, today. I think that's all we got. That's all we got. We are a part of the Whole Care Network, which is a network of resources, of podcasts, of, of educational material that helps caregivers, people who care for other people. Um, so bump on over to thewholecarenetwork.com and check that out. And until next week, listen, folks, life is hard sometimes. We live in a complicated and difficult world. Just make sure that whatever you do this week, don't screw it up. Bye. Bye.